One text very commonly used um, for the Trinity, another one is John chapter 10, verses 30 through 31. I and my father one, and then, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Uh, it's quoting what Jesus said. Now let's look at Jesus' commentary on this topic. In John chapter 10, let's go ahead and read verses 30 through 36. Uh, I and my father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming, because I, am, because I said I am the Son of God? Jesus did not defend himself by saying that he was actually God. His defense is that the Bible first is some humans and gods, some humans as gods. Therefore, uh, shouldn't someone sent by God be able to call himself the Son of God, which is a lower position? He defends himself by saying that the Pharisees are mistaken in their belief that it's blasphemy for a person to make the claims that he makes. He's saying that it's not blasphemy if, uh, for a person who is sent in to be sanctified by God to claim to be one with God. He's denying the, that his earlier statement, I and the Father are one, is blasphemous statement for a person to make. Since he's claiming that it's not inappropriate for a person to make to say what he said, he's also denying the statement was a claim to be God. He's saying it's not blasphemy for these people to be called gods to whom the scripture came. Therefore, how can it possibly be blasphemy for someone who is sent by God and consecrated uh, to say that I'm the Son of God? So he's denying that his statement is blasphemous for someone to make. Therefore, he's also denying that it's claiming to be God. Let's look at Jesus' explanation of what he means to be one. Just for clarification on that. Uh, John chapter 17, I'm going to read verses 11 and 20 through 23. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy, Holy Father, keep... Uh, through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. In verse 20, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe in me through their word, uh, that they may be one as thou, uh, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou givest me I have given them and that they may be one even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, and that they may be me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Jesus makes it very clear that he's talking about unity and purpose when he says that people are one, and also he is one with the Father, and saying in, in, in verse 20, that they may also be one in us, so humans being one in Jesus and the Father, too. Uh, you have to ignore the context of the defense. Uh, Jesus gives an explanation being one in order to believe that he's talking about the Trinity in John chapter 10. Anyone that says he's Jesus is talking about the Trinity there is just ignoring the context of his defense in the, in the immediate verses after and um, his later statements about what he means for someone to be one.